Good afternoon, Keith Tebow from FRC Media. Thank you for joining us. It's been a little while since we've checked in with the business climate in Fall River and the South Coast. And when we talk of business climate, we always bring in our friends from the One South Coast Chamber. Please be joined by one of the co-CEOs, Michael O'Sullivan. Michael, how are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you, Keith. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks. Uh, thank you for joining us. You know, it's been a little while since we spoke, but let me let me get right into it. Uh, I want to speak a little bit specifically about, you know, the upcoming summer and what it may mean for a tourism season here on the South Coast, Fall River, New Bedford and the like. But I want to get back to, to, to general business news. I know last time we spoke there, there was a continuing issue of local employers trying to uh, fill open positions. Um, is that still the case? And, you know, are they making any headway at all? Uh, they're not really making headway. It's still an issue in in almost every category of business that that we have. Uh, it it's really it, it's still a struggle. It's still a serious struggle. Um, we've seen you know people getting a lot more creative in ways to hire new people, in offering different benefits for people. Um, of course, increasing wages. Um, it, but it, it's still a challenge for everybody at every level for every kind of position. I know even uh, even today uh, we were reporting on the local uh, unemployment numbers and both New Bedford and Fall River saw a, a steep decline in its unemployment rate. Um, you know, Fall River at uh, just under 6%, New Bedford a little bit better than that. So, you know, even those who are unemployed, you know, the, that pool is, is not as large as it was even, even a few months ago. Um, you know, are, are you still hearing that um, the reason why people aren't working is it is it just related to you know they're they're being very selective of where they want to work and some of these uh, positions which are you know not very you know high skilled in terms of labor uh, those are, are being the more difficult ones to fill. Um, it, it's we're really seeing a wide variety of positions that are difficult to fill. One of the top challenges is still child care you know people just people have just made the decision that they'll figure out where the money is going to come from um, and they'll stay home with their children i think that's that's going to be an interesting piece of what happens this summer um, but it, it, it that's probably the number one challenge that i still hear today yeah, obviously, as uh, schools end for the year, there'll be that that those child care uh, issues that will come up uh, for parents in our mm -hmm. region. Uh, the, the, the other item that we spoke about briefly last time we spoke was uh, the the um, impact that inflation is having. Um, gasoline prices continue to go in the wrong direction. Um, our businesses, you know, facing that that same strain of of needing to, you know, their bills are higher. And in some respects, they also have to charge more. For any services they provide and how are they how are they dealing with it uh in, in most cases it's being passed on to the consumer uh, i don't want to say every case but in most cases it's being passed on to the consumer it's very very difficult you know uh you know this year or uh, a year ago gas was you know was almost 100 percent less than it is today and it, you know businesses can't they just they can't they can't truck things. Um, you know, there's the, I, the phrase I heard yesterday was we've seen unprecedented uh, cost increases uh, that we've never seen before. And and that's that applies to everybody. Uh, gas is a large part of it. Uh, but, you know, salaries are, are increasing tremendously just because uh, people they're trying to hire people, you know, um, the minimum wage is it's not even yet fifteen dollars an hour will be soon but there's a lot of jobs that were being advertised at seventeen dollars an hour now they're twenty two dollars an hour and there's some of the jobs that were still 14 are now seventeen dollars an hour so you're seeing very large increases in in the labor costs even even if the uh, businesses are struggling to, to hire people there's also talk now of the possibility as early as, as later this year of, of a recession because of things being so um, inflated in terms of pricing that, you know, the bottom's going to hit or we will hit a bottom. Um, you know, we're on the way up, but things are starting to, to, to come down. Um, is, is there a fear that 
you know, that may happen as well here in the South Coast, even though, again, all the numbers seem to point to, you know, good employment numbers. And even though prices are high, um, you know, wages are up. Is, is there fear that a recession could kind of wipe everything out? Uh, there's a fear of the unknown. <laughs> there is there is just there's a lot of people that just they're just not convinced that they really do understand what's going to happen. We haven't had a pandemic in a really long time, and the effects of a pandemic um, are really hitting us very, very hard. You know, um, unemployment may be coming down, but if it's in the five to six percent range on employment, that's still kind of high for, you know, especially compared to where it was. But you talk to the employers and the jobs are there and they're, you know, they just don't have the people. So it, it that is, you know, that's just something everybody is really super concerned about. Yeah, I, I like the way you put it. It's the fear of the un unknown. It's not that whether we'll have a recession or not. We don't know. That's the that's the issue. We really don't know what, what's going to be uh, right. coming up over the next few months. But speaking of the next few months, we do know that the weather is going to be warmer. It's already starting to get warm. Uh, we had 90s uh, over the uh, over the weekend on uh, the South Coast. That means the local tourism season will be back up and running. I know the last time uh, we spoke, uh, there was a lot of anticipation uh, toward the summer season and what it may uh, belie for the uh, local tourism and hospitality industry. Um, is the chamber still bullish on what may happen this summer? Yes, we are still bullish. You know, um, from what we're hearing, the Cape is is uh, is virtually booked, um, which is good news for us because that means that there's going to be more spillover onto the South Coast for folks to stay here. Um, and and it's you know just in general, people are ready. People, you know, contrary to what we're talking about with gas prices. People are still going to drive. They're uh, they're more apt to drive uh, to take a vacation, so uh, that that will have a positive impact on the South Coast as well as most of our people uh, come. You know, are are in a driving distance. Uh, so you know, we'll we will do very well. I know that there's going to be a few uh, you know advertising campaigns that are going to break uh, in the next few weeks that are really going to try to help to bring drive people to the South Coast. Uh, most of them are digital, but uh, digital and billboards. Um, so, but we are expecting we're expecting a very good summer. You know, something that uh, that is important to note. Um, I had the opportunity to to speak with co CEO Rick Kidder a couple of weeks ago. He couldn't uh, couldn't join us for today's uh, interview, but he was talking about how um, you know targeting tourism advertising is not meant for the people who live here. Right? You're looking for the people who would want to drive the distance that may be interested in going to the Cape. But, you know, as you said, all the hotels are booked. So, hey, we've got some great hotels here on the South Coast. So the targeting is not for people locally, correct? That's correct. It's very much uh, people, you know, 50, 70, 100 miles or more. Um, you know, the advertising that the Southeastern Mass Visitors Bureau does targets people as far away as the Philadelphia region. There's a lot of people from there that will drive to the Cape, upstate New York, eastern Canada, uh, western Massachusetts. Uh, they don't necessarily focus on, you know, uh, reaching people that are already living here. Yeah, very interesting, um, to say the least. Now, in terms of some of the attractions, you know, one of the great things about summer on the South Coast is there's always a lot of uh, great events uh, happening in New Bedford and, and Fall River. Um, last year seemed to be a transition year. Some events uh, were held. Some were still put off a little bit because of COVID. But from what I understand, there's going to be a lot of local events uh, pretty much back to normal in 2022. Is that what you're hearing as well? Yes, that's what we're hearing. The, uh, you know, the Portuguese, uh, the, the feasts um, are back uh, in both cities um, later in the summer. Um, you know, so we're very excited about that. You've already seen the last couple of weeks, we've already seen a couple of events on the pier in New Bedford, um, Taste of South Coast um, and, uh, you know, things like that. So they, they are definitely coming back. You know, we, we've we had a few in-person events recently. We had one this morning, um, a women's forum where Carol Fiola spoke and we had maybe 70, 75 people uh, were there, uh, you know, um, so it, the, the live in-person 
events are definitely coming back. So we're very excited about that. And we're look, of course, it's it's not in the summer; it's in October. But we're really looking forward to the Chowder Fest on October eighth. Right. And, you know, in terms of other chamber events, I know, uh, you know, we get your, your, your newsletters uh, from the chamber. All the events now are in person. Are you seeing participation levels uh, that are back to 2019 in terms of in-person? I wouldn't say that. In, in some cases, yes. Uh, the business after hours are, are slowly growing. Uh, but we've had some other great events. We've got, um, you know, we've got women's luncheons that have, you know, 30 people that, that's basically new in the last year uh, or so. Uh, but that's doing very, very well. But we had the uh, the state of the city for uh, the city of New Bedford, where Mayor Mitchell spoke in, in April. Uh, that had about 550 people at New Bedford High School. So that, that's one of the biggest of the year. And that was back to, uh, you know, to normal, I'll call it. But, you know, where it had well over 500 people in the past so we're, you know, we're getting there. We had, uh, we also had at McGovern's, we had um, Mayor Coogan speak and we had over a hundred people for that. It's a, you know, it's a different, um, he's not giving the full state of the city because the charters are different. So it's not quite as many people are coming as, as you have when we do the state of the city in New Bedford, but we call it the state of business in Fall River. And we had over 100 people and Mayor Coogan did a great job with that. So, yeah, we're getting we're definitely getting back to to normal with with those events. We're going to have a sip and sail in July, which is going to be um, we're going to take the, the ferry, the Cuddy Hunk ferry around the harbor um, and, and just, you know, have a good time it's sponsored by Dang Five. And it's that'll be a really good time on uh, it's in July. So, we you know, we've got a lot of good things that are going on that we're it's, it is really getting back to normal. It's not quite back there yet, but it's headed back to normal. And, you know, you talk about uh, events in in um, in the region, and um, you know, the Four of Arts and Culture Coalition, which you know falls under the umbrella of of the chamber, is doing some good things. Uh, you mentioned a couple of weeks ago they had uh, events. They were involved in helping you know promote with Viva Fall River the the fabric event, and Viva Fall River had their We Heart Fall River event. I know Frack is doing some more uh, great arts and culture initiatives. There's uh, hopefully some murals going up in the city very soon. So there's a lot happening in Fall River that a lot of people may not have been used to that has been uh, that that's going to be happening. That's very true. And and Frack and Viva Fall River are two organizations that are doing great stuff. Um, I know they had a ball working with Michael Benavides and the folks from Portugalia on fabric. Uh I guess it's about two weeks ago now, but Fabric Festival was fantastic. Um, and yes, they're, uh, you know, they've got a lot of good things happening. Um, Ashley Okino with FRAC is really working hard on the, the mural project. If you want to donate money, if you go to, uh, we'll, be, we'll gladly take donations. Uh, we've got to match a $30,000 grant by June 30th uh, in order to be able to pull that off. But we're really looking forward to it. We're looking to having uh, two murals, public art, up in the city. Uh, you know, by the end of the summer, if all goes well, and uh, you know, public art is just is just terrific uh, to have, and and we really hope that we're able to make that happen. I know the uh, Fall River, um, Patty calls it the uh, the Fall River Fam. The uh, farmers market is uh, is is here. Um, I think it's this weekend and then every other weekend uh, through the summer. Um, Patty and Stephanie and they'll do a great job with that. So, yeah, we've got a lot of great things happening. And then, of course, you know, as as this when school gets out, there's even more great stuff that's happening in the city. You know, we're, they're yeah. going to have many, many of the events that are going on and uh, that, that happened last year. And they're really looking forward to, you know, some things that I, I don't want to jump the gun and make any announcements. I'll give the wrong date or if it's something the city's putting on, but they've got a lot of great things that are happening and we're very, very excited about it. Yeah. Obviously with the uh, city pier moving forward, I'm sure I know that, that plays a part in some of what may be happening uh, later on this summer. All right. Michael O'Sullivan, co-CEO of the one South coast chamber. As always, thank you for joining me. We'll talk again soon. I appreciate it. Thank you, Keith. Thanks for having me. All right. Take care now. Take care. And thank you for joining us here at FRC media. I'm Keith Tebow. Have a great day.